we're back at Investor Channel's headquarters in San Diego, California. We welcome back today our longtime guest, Richard Schumacher, President and CEO of Pressure Biosciences. Rick, thanks so much for coming back on the show. Dan, Daniel, thank you very much for having me back. Appreciate it. So, Rick, last time we talked about you having this extremely good quarter, the years in place, you've got a lot of things going on. But just recently, you had a press release regarding two patents on your new UltraShear technology. Will you tell us a little bit about what that means and how you're applying that? We, uh, we received two utility model patents from China. These are uh, patents that we applied for about 30 months ago. We've now applied for them in the U.S. and Canada, throughout Europe, Asia, and, uh, and Japan. And we're very fortunate and very happy to announce that China has given us our first two patents in what we call ultra shear technology. We are, as you know, experts in using high pressure. The pressures we go to uh, for the products we make uh, can go up to 100,000 pounds per square inch. Uh, pressure is a natural force that moves at the speed of sound. It's an amazing uh, natural force. And when you can harness it, you can use it for a lot of good. And ultra shear technology is a technology that combines very high pressure with very intense shearing forces. And what we do is we put liquids through very high pressure, and then we put them through a number of valves that we've invented. Uh, and then it comes out of the valves in a very specific way, which shears the product and uh, can turn it into nano nanoparticles uh, and do many other things. So ultra shear technology is a platform technology. It can be used in the food industry. It can be used in, uh, in nutraceuticals and pharmaceuticals and, uh, and many other things. So, Rick, we were talking, though, and it's applicable in the CBD space. And this is obviously a very hot space in the market. People are continuously looking for different ways to get a better quality out of this. How are you applying that into the CBD space? Well, in making CBD is a molecule, one of about 400 that comes from the cannabis plant. Um, and CBD has been shown by a number of people to have very interesting uh, positive medicinal qualities. And the initial extraction is done by a number of ways. We've talked to people. We have friends in the business who use what's called supercritical uh, fluids to extract CBD <clears throat> from the hemp plant and other cannabis plants. This is the uh, a compound that does not have any psychoactive uh, capabilities. It's not THC, but it. Uh, but there's a number of people that uh, out there that have talked about the medicinal properties of CBD. Once you've extracted it from the hemp plant, you, it then comes out as a, in an oil. So it's called CBD oil. Uh, oil is not absorbed that well in the body. So there are a number of people that are taking CBD oil, uh, and, and they, they don't get what we call a lot of bioavailability. Uh, what companies are trying to do is, make, is increase the bioavailability, increase the absorption. One way to do that is to make what we call nano emulsions. Emulsions are where you have two or more liquids that really don't mix like oil and water, and you're able to mix them. We use um, a number of chemicals and what we call surfactants to do this uh, in the industry. But, but we're also, we at using ultra shear technology believe we can make uh, emul uh, uh, nano emulsions by actually putting them through the system, which is a, the combination of high pressure and the intense shear forces, we break the oil droplets down into nanoparticles, into smaller particles. They contain the CBD molecule, and as they become smaller, they they get dispersed and and they actually get uh, go into solution in the water. So it becomes water soluble. Uh, we can we believe we can do this with minimal amounts of detergents, maybe or surfactants, maybe even none. We're working on this now. It's part of the process that we applied for in the patent. So, Rick, it sounds like to me with this patent, you have the potential to really increase, as you said, the, the efficiency or the way it's absorbed in the body. We've always heard, you know, oil and water don't mix, but you guys are changing basically the fact that that can be done and increase the, um, obviously, uh, the way it's delivered and the way it's absorbed in the body. That is really big. We've seen a lot of different applications for CBD. We've had, heard a lot of stories, at least personally myself, of, of how, what a big change in their, in their, their medical um, availability to have some, some help there from CBDs. I think a lot of your listeners have probably heard stories like that. I, I uh, interesting. Uh, we put the press release out yesterday morning, and and after it went out, I had a, a a Monday morning meeting, and this gentleman told me about his mother, who's 83 years old and is on uh, was on a lot of pain medicine and was very slow and uh, very methodical in everything she did, and uh, her uh, uh, her husband. 
uh, heard about CBD, bought CBD oil. She started taking it. And he said three months later, she reduced her pain medicine down to one pill versus multiple pills a day. And, uh, and she also became much more lively, uh, much quicker. Uh, his, his, his mother was back, as he said. So it's interesting, the stories that we hear. Uh, but what we're talking about here is how do we get this compound or any compound that is not easily mixed with water? How can we make it more bioavailable? How can we get the body to absorb it more? And one way is to make it water soluble. And once you make it water soluble, the body is much more, has a much better ability uh, to absorb that molecule. And that's what we believe we can do with UST. We, we believe with ultra shear, we're going to be able to break uh, oil droplets down into very small, what we call nanoparticles, where they become dissolved in water and then that will be able to be in, uh, intake by the body in much, much better quantities, much higher bioavail bioavailability than it would be if it was just putting oil on one's tongue, let's say. And it seems like there's all these multiple applications now. You know, you mentioned nutraceuticals, pharmaceuticals, you know, multiple different areas you've now been able to apply this technology to. So I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. It seems like there's some huge potential there for you. There, there's a great potential in this technology. Uh, there, there's, there are... Um, uh, a number of areas that we are looking at. We're looking in cosmetics. We're looking in, in of course, uh, nutraceuticals, uh, vitamin E, vitamin uh, C, a number of, of things that, that we take every day, that many of us take every day, are not water soluble. So yes, we're excited about the potential. We're excited to get our first two patents. Uh, we're at the national stage now, and we've applied for uh, patents uh, in many countries around the world. Well, Rick, uh, let's let's switch gears here because you were just at um, another conference here, and you were actually at they like to call it kind of the Oscars of, of innovation there, and you were named uh, as one of the finalists at the 2017 R and D Awards. Tell us a little bit more about that. Amongst some other names, you had Lincoln Labs of MIT, uh, Oak Ridge. Uh, tell us what that means for the company. What type of visibility that gives you and credibility? Well, the R&D awards have been uh, given out since the 1950s. I believe it's something like 55 years now in a row. Uh, they are considered by many to be the number one award you can get for innovation in a year. The 2017 uh, awards, yes, we, uh, we are a finalist uh, in the 2017. We'll be going to Orlando on November 17th and finding out if we've won. Uh, just the fact that we were nominated with the uh, with the labs and the individuals and the groups that you've mentioned, it's it's just quite an honor for us. And this is we've we've been honored this with our new uh, 2320 Extreme instrument. This is the instrument, as you know, that we released earlier uh, or late last year, and uh, we've replaced the existing instrument that sold for seven years with this new computer-driven instrument. It has opened up a tremendous number of doors in the biopharma business for us. Where we used to be going into biopharma for one or two purposes, now we can go in and be used. Our instrument can be used throughout the entire life cycle of, the, of a drug from the early discovery of the target uh, to the validation of it, uh, to making of the drug itself and developing and then quality controlling it before it goes out. This could never happen before with our previous instrument because we didn't have the output. We didn't have the USB port. We couldn't download what's happened to uh, to the sample as it went through those various uh, parts of the of drug discovery and uh, and drug development. We can do that now. So we're very excited. Uh, we have a number of uh, of biopharma companies that are now beginning to look at us and and to be used in multiple areas of their of their company rather than just in the very beginning the discovery part. Well, Rick, congratulations on that. You always continue to impress. You're always bringing out something new, and it's obviously uh, resonating with, with the community. Uh, Rick, to, to also touch on here, because you've been having a really good year. You've got a full sales team in, in place now. We've talked about ramping up the sales, ramping up the revenue. Now's the time where these sales come in, and we start to see the money start to flow through the door. Talk to us a little bit about uh, how this that was third quarter's gone for you and um, you know, kind of the, the strategy going forward. Well, we have given guidance that uh, investors should expect us to report a record third quarter, a record quarter of all time, the highest revenue of all time. We've given that guidance several times uh, in, in, the, in the past uh, few weeks, uh, and, and certainly we're standing by that guidance. So, uh, and, and what's, what's really exciting about that is that the new sales team is just now getting out in the field, just after Labor Day. Uh, were they out in the field on their own. And, and it generally takes a good few months uh, after being trained uh, for a salesperson to start bringing in sales. 
And uh, but that's already started to happen. So part of our, our of our record third quarter that we expect to announce uh, in the coming weeks is due to the fact that several of our new salespeople already brought in orders in September, which surprised us. It, it made us very happy. Uh, we think we've got the right people. You're right. We've been living as a company with one salesperson for the past eight or so years. Now we have six full time salespeople. Uh, we're covering uh, the country. We're out in the field. It's an exciting time for us right now. Very exciting. Well, Rick, uh, that looks like it's about the time we have here. We want to thank you again for coming on and sharing all that uh, those developments with us. We'll definitely look forward to have you come back on and update us. I'd be happy to do it, Daniel. Thank you. All right, everyone. That's Rick Schumacher, President and CEO of Pressure Biosciences, ticker symbol PBIO. Catch more interviews on Investor Town Hall's YouTube channel. Subscribe to our podcast, and uh, we'll see you next time. Stay tuned for the next interviews here on InvestorTownHall.com 